All right, this is Mr. Tesslonian here. Just want to give you a brief tutorial on uh, how you can put together a homemade dry washer similar to this one. Uh, let me go through it as fast as I can here. So if you look down inside, I have a bunch of metal, a uh, chunk of metal screen running down here. Underneath it, I have these metal plates going across. Uh, these are just thin pieces of aluminum uh, flat plate that I found on the ridge of a aluminum window frame. These big rails that you see coming down the side here are also aluminum window frames. Uh, these hold up the screen, the metal stainless steel screen here, and create a dead zone. They all line up perfectly with where the riffles, uh, which I'll show you here in a minute, will sit down and create a dead zone underneath the riffles so that the air doesn't disturb the gold where the riffles are. If right here you can look through the screen, you'll see something down in there. That is a one-way valve. I don't know how clean that's going to come out for you. It's a butterfly valve I created on a piece of 4-inch PVC. It's got two stainless steel uh, flaps with rods going through the center there and a leather seal on the bottom of them. And if I pull the handle here, you'll notice that the shadow of the handle is in the way, but those butterfly valves, you can hear it opening. And so that way I don't get any drawback of uh, dirt into my bellow from the dry washer. It, it seals it off on the downstroke and then underneath the dry washer here, you'll have your bellow. And underneath it is the opening here for another four inch one way valve that opens and shuts so that you've got airflow in and then airflow out. But when you shut it, you don't draw any uh, dust in from your box. The box is made out of an old uh, flood warning sign that was on my property here. Uh, I folded it up. What I did is I folded it to the exact dimensions of a set of uh, sluice box riffles that I already had from a sluice box, which are right here, as you can see. Now I have that set up in a special way to go on there, and I'll show you that here real quick. Uh, so this is, let me get out of the light here. This is a set of sluice box riffles, and what I did is I took a, you can see on the bottom, it's like a farmer's bag of some kind, cloth bag. And I cut it down the length so it'd sit underneath my riffles. And these are aluminum uh, screen, window screen pieces that I've cut. And I'll show you how they're hold on here. They're kind of just pressed down on there. See the little groove on that side where the, the, the actual metal screen and the rubber used to sit down in there? Well, what I do is I fold that cloth. You pull it real tight around your riffles. And I fold it up over the top. And that little groove sits just perfectly tight enough that when you push that down, it keeps that cloth nice and tight to your riffles. Uh, so, and that's actually where the gold will all be sitting. So when I pull this out, everything will be sitting on top of this, and it's easy to clean. So here we are. We're going to set that up in there real quick. So you would take that, get back just a little, and you'd slide it up in, pull it down. I've got two pieces of aluminum window frame there that fold up and lock it into place. Oh, I might have to fold this down to do the, the arms out here first. This arm is built out of also aluminum window frames uh, coming down here, and that holds up the upper box. And that's your material feed box. Uh, I've got two little notches right here cut on either side uh, all the way up and down this so that it's got different heights, and that way this can sit right inside that notch right here and it doesn't slide and that'll hold your box up at the height or the angle that you want. You've got rods connecting it across, bolted with solid rod through. That's a real estate sign on that was when I bought my property from the agent that was selling it. Uh, folded up and set up there. All right, so now what I've got here underneath that is I've got a aluminum rod tent pole with a big spring going down here to uh, a metal gate. And this is sitting at the end of the box. So when you pull down on this arm, it opens up that gate and dumps material into the, the dry washer. All right, so uh, there you go. And that's uh, all made out of homemade stuff here. This is a piece of metal in the front. Uh, I bent the, the metal over a piece of metal rod to create my hinge. Uh, this cloth on the billow was from a cot that I had. It's just plywood, two sections of plywood, uh, one top, one bottom. If I pull that up, maybe you can get a shot from underneath there. And you can see 
up inside of that that valve and you can see that that valve opens and shuts with a center guide and it's just an outer and inner ring there of plywood cementing the the bellow material on with a leather hinge all the way down at the other side so pretty simple to build the legs are aluminum window frames uh, all very simple and here it is in motion All right, Loyal, here's my dry washer in action. Let's see how well this turns out for you. quarters of a bucket of material. And there, it's clean. Three quarters of a bucket down to clean riffles. There you go. Here's my arm. Comes down. Actuates the bellow. And there's the bellow, the big street sign, some window stuff. So there it is, man. That was it at motion there. That was three quarters of a bucket of material, man, down to clean that fast. Mr. Teslonian here. Uh, hope you can handle the wind in the shot here. I hope the sound's not too much. I'm going to go over some of the mechanical operations of the easy lift system here. Tell here how the uh, the containers were cut. They link together right here. The water will fill in the big blue one and come out and fill the yellow one. Uh, so that, here's your first settling tank. This way you get very little sands back in your pump system. Uh, I've got screen inside of the lower the third stage here. I hope you can see that down in there. It makes it so the rocks and, and the material actually end up all the way down. You can scoop them out the end very little gets back into your tub just the water uh, inside the tube we've got uh, that black rib matting I'll have to show you in another episode that's your third stage and that just feeds in at the end of your sluice box there that the second stage sluice box feeds into the end of that pipe there's your second stage sluice box you can see the grizzly here is a uh, grate from a uh, oven and all I did is on the sluice box flare so that material wouldn't blow off the back side of it is I put a piece of window frame right here and I bolted that on right there so it creates a, a back lip and that way the big rocks you don't really have to classify this with this system it's because it's triple stage and it's got the the grizzly here you can really just put full unscreened material through here and you can wash your rocks a bit all right so there's the system there you can see it coming up uh, the water comes in here underneath that V groove right here behind this drops down out of the bottom through the system uh, dumps in from your gate you can see the gate opens and shuts here so you can dump material all the way to wide open if you wanted uh, you can dump your material that's it's really easy to use hold your bucket up there so I'm gonna set the camera here in a minute let me finish going through this uh, this is just uh, awning chunks for an RV. These brighter aluminum pieces here you see are for the awning uh, piece for an RV. Uh, all Everything else like this is all window frames. Uh, this was, I'm not sure what it was off of, two pieces of steel that I found that linked together pretty well, the Bolton Center. Uh, and then I got a chunk of uh, C-channel aluminum that works as my lock. So you can sit here and open the lock like this and then it'll bend 
and you can close the lock and it'll, the weight will hold it nice and shut so you don't, your bucket won't fall. That's your lock system. It's nice and easy to use. All this pivots and hinges off of this steel rod going underneath all this. I put a strengthening channel over the steel rod to bolt it all down to the bottom of the aluminum sign there and it comes all the way through to this side. So it's just hose clamps keeping it centered uh, on there. I've got a, a bearing right here, bearing race holding the back end of this on. This is a safety catch. The reason that's sitting there is that's what keeps it when you go over from going all the way back, uh, back and collapsing on your hand or something. It's actually a safety measure there. Uh, so let me put the camera down here for a second. I'll show you it in action uh, a few times and then uh, we can go from there. All right, there we go. Hopefully the wind doesn't blow that over. So you undo your lock, and you would just bring it down. It's down, you take the hook off the bucket, and you take your bucket, and you take a new one, set it on there. It's got this little hook here so the bucket doesn't slide forward. You can lift the system right back up again, like so. That's your lock, and it sits there nicely. So once again, you just pull your lock, bring down your system, undo the bucket, and you're ready to go once again. You can also just shovel into this bin. You don't have to use it as a bucket system. You can also prop that up. It's got a different length attachment here so that this becomes your shovel tray. Right now I have it set on the bucket mode. So one final time, you hook your hook, you lift the system up, onto the sluice box, you engage your lock, there you go. Hope you enjoyed. Well here, I'll show you the very end of it here. So here's your water flow coming in the back of your sluice box right here through that pipe. Coming down into the yellow bin. I have actually twin pumps for this one if I want to use them. Uh, the first stage your water will come in through here. So and then down and into that pump. So there you go, there's the full system. I hope you enjoyed. Welcome back to the Thessalonian Man Show. I'm Mr. Thessalonian. Uh, one of the questions I've been getting often here is do I have a video of the Easy Lift with the three-stage sluice box in action? So today I'm gonna give you that video. I didn't have the bins in the setup anymore. The bins have been cracked, so I'm gonna go ahead and run it out of a pool here as a two-stage, but with the Easy Lift. I've got two buckets of heavy materials here down from the bedrock that I just dug up. I'm going to throw them through the easy lift and show you how it works. Here we go. First step here is I'm going to go ahead and unlock the easy lift lock. I'm going to set the bucket lift all the way down like that. Make sure your little hook is sitting out in the open. Next step here is take your bucket of material, set it up on there, make sure your handle's sticking out. You're going to want to grab that with the hook. That keeps the material in the bucket and the bucket from sliding all the way forward when I lift this up. Now this is a really heavy bucket of material because I wanted to show you how well this can hold it. It'll take me a little strain to get it up there, but here we go. Lock the lock into place. The easy lift is now holding the material up. We have the gate here. So we can start feeding material into the system. A little bit at a time, washing it off, get rid of your bigger rocks, ready for another dump. I'm going to grab the camera here in a minute. I'm going to give you this from another angle. So as you can see, the rather heavy bucket of material here, it's holding it up just fine. You just got to lift it up there. I have in the works right now a 12 volt little winch operated model that will actually lift this up with the push of a button right off the side. So let me just keep going. We'll wash some of this material through. I like to run this typically if I'm running unscreened gravel with twin pumps. Right now I've only been running a single pump. You can see the material's coming down. Stuff already on top of the grizzly here at the end. Definitely don't have the water flow I would like without the twin pumps with these bigger rocks in here. You can see the material coming through the lower stage here. 
Uh, on the other video, you see the two coming off the third stage going into the bins. I don't have that running right now. I'll do that later when I'm ready to go with some new bins. So let me go ahead and dump a little bit more. I don't know if you can see the material coming off the end there. Wash some of those off. So there you go. That's a side profile of how to use the easy lift system with the three stage sluice. Uh, as you can tell, it's nice and easy. You just open up your gate, it's ready to go. The easy lift track here is uh, adjustable. So you can adjust your pitch. If your material's a little stickier, you need a little slanted, or if it's drier and just wants to come out. Uh, also, you can shovel directly into this. You don't need to use the bucket. And actually, I'll show you that later. It sits out flat, you can shovel directly into it. So we'll put a little bit more material in here. Let that go through. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change the camera position for you. I'm going to put it over here. I'm going to give you a straight on view of what it looks like using the easy lift of the dump gate and all the rest. Give me just a moment to reset. Alright, here we go. I'm going to give you a straight on shot of the easy lift. I'm going to load a new bucket of material up and show you what it looks like. So once again, you put your hook on it. Set your lock and it's ready to go. You see the material's come down and built up against the gate. It's got some bigger rocks in here. A little bigger than I'd like to use typically. I noticed my one side here just collapsed. Give me a second. It needs to be tightened. All right, so there we go. Now you can use the gate. Open it up for a second, feed the rocks in. The newer model I'm gonna have for sale uh, this is my first prototype. It actually has a sprayer right here to help clean out your bucket while you're doing this. Because right now I've got some bigger rocks jamming up against that. So as you can see, you can feed in a little bit of material at a time. And like I said, I don't like the fact that I only have one pump running for such a big system right now. Uh, on Recirculator, you always screen your material and it works a lot better. So we're going to go ahead and just, and this is bedrock clay, like I said, so it's not coming out of there very easy. Nice thing is, though, that the, the benefit of Easy Lift is right now, I'm not holding that material up over all this. I'm not having to scoop it in. Right now it's being held. I have a small version that holds your bucket over your sluice box in a river. So you no longer have to hold that over that either. So uh, until next time, I hope you enjoyed. You're watching the Thessalonian Man Show. All right, folks, uh, Mr. Thessalonian back here. I want to go through here and show you an invention of mine called the Focus Pan. I waited to do this video until both I got the patent pending status on this and the tool mold was done uh, for the Plastic Injection Molding Company. So all that's done now so I can show you how to build one of these yourself out of scrap. What I've got here to start out the project, so I've got some uh, quarter inch corrugated screen here, metal screen, this is scrap chunk. I've got a chunk of aluminum that I believe came from a battery box off an RV because you can see some erosion took place over here on the corner. Uh, what I've done on the back side of it, I don't know how clean that's going to be, is I marked my center and I took a string and a nail and I made my circle around it. So I'm going to cut that circle out and I'm going to cut a line down to the center. I have one bolt. I wish it wasn't a uh, sharp bolt, but uh, had a nut and a washer I could use, but this is what I found. So I took this piece of plastic from a window, I drilled a hole in it, and created my washer and nut. The other pieces you'll need is one hose clamp, really small, big enough for the nut you're going to use, and a tuna fish can. So let me start cutting all these pieces now that I've showed you this, and uh, when I've got them cut, I'll turn the video on and show you where we're going from there. All right, folks, I'm um, back here again real quick. I'm going to show you two more parts of this. Uh, first of all, that aluminum sheet, this is what it now looks like. So what I've done is I've cut my circle out. I've cut a smaller circle in the center. I've made one cut down the line here so you can see that it's open. 
to, short, to shape this pan, what you'll do is you'll take one side and overlap it the other and fold this pan together like so. You're looking for a shape, something similar to this. It gives you a nice dish. It's not too steep, it's not too shallow. So this is what we're looking for for the pan shape. Hopefully you can see that. I'll form this a little bit better, a little more even as I go here. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna mark a line here so I get my measurement of what size my pan's gonna be. I'm gonna drill and put some rivets in here. And that'll stay that shape. And we'll, I'll show you that when we're done from there. The other part of this is the can. So what I've done here is drilled a hole in the bottom of the can. I don't know if I'm too high for that camera here. Uh, I've drilled a hole in the bottom of the can. I've taken my bolt, and on that bolt, I've taken a spring. Okay, so I put the spring on the bolt, and a nut that's gonna fit over it all, kind of acting as a washer. So I'm gonna stick that through the bottom of the can, like so, there we go. This will be the top side when we get there. I'll show you this, one washer the piece of plastic that's going to lock it down. So there's your can piece. That's how you put that together. So all we got left to do is to fold this, put the rivets in it, we'll cut out our screen chunk for the top, and we'll attach the can. I'll turn it on when we're ready to go for that. Alright, Mr. Tessalonian back here with the final product of the Focus Pan, and uh, I just want to show you what it looks like put together here. Uh, so this is your focus pan. You can see that piece of screen has been cut in a circle. I actually overlapped that one twice because it was a little weak for what I wanted. So I'm going to take it apart here and I'm going to show you uh, what it looks like. And first of all, I'd like to describe to you why and how this works. You can see the slope of the angle of the pan is very similar to the top side of a normal gold pan. What happens here is instead of having to wash the dirt off the top to find your gold, you fill the pan full of material, you put it underneath the water, and in the same action that you would use just for settling your gold in a normal gold pan, what happens here is that that gold will fall through into this can. Now I'll show you why it stays in there. And do your top nut. I did put a little extra washer on there so it does take a little bit longer to undo that. Okay, so I'll turn that towards you here. So I've taken my washer and my nut off. Now you unthread your screen out of there. I made this nice and tight so you have to unthread everything. Okay, so there's your screen. It's just a circle. It actually holds against the outside rim here so that it stays in place under the pressure between the can and it. So your, your can and the screen become the washer and the nut to hold it all onto the, the gold pan. So the principle behind how this works is this, is that if you notice here, the hole in the gold pan and the size of the can are different sizes. When the gold falls down and through this hole and into the can, let me take the bolt out of here to show you what I'm gonna explain. When it falls in, the can lip is sitting high up here on the edge, instead of being right here even with the hole. So when this is sitting on there, when the gold falls into the can, when you turn the pan sideways, like say what it is right now, the gold isn't gonna rise up and then out the hole. The gold's gonna drop down and settle right here against the trap edge created inside the pan. And that's the actual gold trap, so you can tilt the pan over and none of the gold gets out. So when that can's sealed to it, now a lot of times what I'll do is I'll take some silicone and put a bead of silicone around this and a piece of tape here so it doesn't stick. I'll put it all together and let the silicone dry so there's a nice seal around the pan so there's nothing getting out of there. Uh, the, the finished products that you'll see on the market here in the next month are going to be made out of the same plastic as a normal gold pan. Uh, so you, you won't see anything different there than what you, you're normally seeing in a gold pan. Uh, the can will actually screw on and so will the screen on top so you won't need the bolt in the center. The product is already now uh, done, the tool mold is done, so you'll see this on the market here soon. But if you want to make one yourself and see how well they work, here you go, here's the plans and I hope you enjoyed. Howdy folks, uh, Mr. Tesslonian back here, and I wanted to show you the Goldemian sluice box in action. Uh, here we go, we're going to put some material in it and watch it work. And if you notice, you can put that material through this top Goldemian pretty quickly here.
This is highly rich concentrates that we've screened down to a fine screening uh, out of a good gold hole here in Arizona. So you'll watch these riffles appear of black sand as the material goes through the system. What we will typically do, let me get a little closer here so you can see what's going on, is we run about one bucket's worth of material through the goldemian before we change it. And that means that we just undo the lower lock magnet and put that directly over a bucket and turn the pump on and all the black sands immediately come right out. So you'll notice here how that's removing a lot of that black sand and there's a pre-classification pre system here. And it also creates really good gold trap riffles. These little spikes created by the magnetic particles of black sand magnetite. So here you go, you can see the, the lower littler magnets are slowly starting to build up and that's a good indicator that we're getting more and more black sand. It may look like that there's a lot of black sand already building up in there, but they'll get much higher than that. It, it's grabbing most of it through the system as it's happening. So here we go here. We're going to do a quick run. I almost tripped. Uh, do a quick run here and just show you what it does, how much it's working through. Give a quick hand here on some of the clay. Now I'm going to go down to the lower box here and you can see the material coming through. I don't know how good without the, the shadow affecting it that you can be able to see all this. But there's the material flowing down. Here's your magnets up underneath the, the Goldemian prototype here creating those riffles. I actually shouldn't bring the phone too close to those since they'll probably mess up the computer and the phone. So here we go. We've, we've put in through quite a bit of material here. You can see these riffles are definitely getting bigger and bigger. The best indicator of getting close to full on black sands is this lower line you see, the thin one. This will build up pretty big. Right now, that's all that's getting trapped by it. All right, well, I'll turn the... All right, folks, here we are back again. We are about a bucket and a half into uh, running the Goldemian sluice here. And you'll notice just how much bigger these ripples have become uh, with their black sand. And it's still pulling out large amounts. I mean, this thing really does a good job for a long time pulling your black sands out. You'll notice that lower riffle I indicated to you earlier that was still small has gotten much bigger. In fact, there's a nice pile building on the lock magnet and on the lower indicator magnets at the very bottom down here. Those are my black sand indicator magnets. And they're starting to get to the point where I'm going to want to change this. Um, you can let some black sand through your lower sluice box down here. You just want to keep most of it out. So there's a, a balance point between speed and uh, efficiency here. So when we get this thing ready to clean... All right, here we are. We've done two buckets of material through the Goldemian. So I'm going to turn it off, show you what it looks like without it, the water running. So here we are. Here's the Goldemian sluice now completely packed full of black sands. And I'll try to give you an indicator just to how how deep that is. Uh, that's not going to work on that side. But it's about up to my my first little knuckle here. So it's a good inch deep at least, all the way up these riffles. So now I'm going to show you how to clean it. So we're going to pop this out. Real easy here. It just tilts over. You have a bucket you set underneath it. Okay. And then I'm going to take right here, this big chunk that you see is actually my lock neodymium covered in black sand. So I'm just going to push it down to the bottom. There we go. It's going to sit right down there. We're going to pull the bottom plate with my thumb. I'm just going to press that bottom plate away. And now I'm going to turn on the water flow. You're going to watch how this cleans right out. Here we go. Tilt it, Rock. There we go. There it is, already clean. Turn the water flow off. You notice the Goldemian sluice box is nice and clean. You fold the bottom back up, throw your lock 
magnet back on it. Go ahead and throw the lock magnet on it. Okay, there we go. So the gold demian is clean, ready to go back on the system for another two buckets of concentrate. Well, I hope you enjoyed our demonstration of the gold demian. Hi folks, uh, Mr. Teslonian back here. I just wanted to go through the process that I've been building this uh, self-powered trommel. It'll be both powered by water flow and material entering the trommel and by hand. So it'll be both that you, know, you can use this. Uh, real quick, I'm just going to show you this trommel in action with what I've gotten mounted and then I'll show you how I mounted it. So here we go. That's about the speed that you'd be wanting to run this at. I was showing you how fast it could run, but right about there is definitely plenty fast enough. And you notice I don't have to turn this pedal very fast. But I can show you this will go much faster. All right, so it's also got a brake on the pedal here, so it immediately lets me lock that up for safety issues. So let me show you how I had this mounted. All right, so what I've done here, let me walk around the system so you can see the end of it here. A little bit of sun glare gonna be at that angle. I'll try to turn for you. But you can see the bike here. Back tires, got the belt going around the PVC coupler. It's coming down here. And you can see this right here, this little two piece of prong off the bike frame is where the back seat or the bike seat was uh, clamped down at. So I took a piece of aluminum, cut it out, created a hinge piece for it, put a pin through it, so it's locked in there. And that gives me a fulcrum to pivot some pressure off on this wheel so I can create tension against the pulley. And down here at the bottom, you see this piece of aluminum window frame. None of this is cut to size yet, but uh, it's mounted down here at the bottom. And then the adjustment screw, which is underneath the pedal right now, is right here. And you can see that it goes all the way through to another plate on the other side so you can pull pressure, push it inwards to pull pressure against your wheel and then bolt it tight so it'll keep that pressure. So there you go, that has been the self-powered trommel so far as I've been building it. Uh, the other parts of it that I've put on have been these upper two wheels. Uh, they're not permanently mounted yet, I just put a band across them to keep the pressure just to watch it work. This wheel twisted just a little bit there. Uh, but other than that, it seems to work really well, so I'm going to permanently mount all this, uh, make it so it holds on nice and tight, and I'll show you the video of it after I get the paddles, which will attach to this pedal here on this side, and it'll, they'll be stuck out as material enters this system and flows downwards against those paddles. Material will leave it into the uh, trommel and create the power necessary to turn this bike. So... Uh, Hope you'll enjoy it when I get this done and I'll show you as it gets going. Hi folks, uh, real quick here, just as a, a part of the demonstration on the self-powered trommel, hand-powered trommel system. I got a bucket with a bunch of dirt here. I, I don't have a feed ramp built yet, so I'm just gonna kinda splash the dirt in there, put quite a bit in there, rotate it, and then show you the classification and that it works. So give me just a second to put the dirt in. All right, that should be a good pile of dirt within the system there. And now I'll put this into action and see what we can do here. Give me just a second here to line myself up. If you go too fast, it'll actually centrifugally hold the material in there. And right now I'm going just about the right speed so that it works as a trommel. As you can see, I've just about ran most of what I put in there out of there now. All right, so I'm gonna show you what it looks like underneath here in the classification. Let me zoom back out here. Okay, this would be a little bit difficult to see without moving the trommel piece here, but I'm going to go ahead and move it. And so you can see underneath it here, out of the shadow, a nice pile 
of classified material right here came out of the trommel screen. No rocks in it, and at the very end is the stick and the rocks coming out of the end of the trommel tube. So it's working right, works pretty easily, gives you a, a nice fine sifting on your material here. So I'll get back on this and uh, try to finish as much of this as I can here today so I can get this video done. I hope you enjoyed uh, just looking at how it works here. You'd think that this would be a bad thing to have, this corrugated uh, tubing, but in reality, because of the direction the tubing's running and centrifugal force, it does a really good job helping break that material up, helping wash it. So stay tuned till the next episode. Hi folks, Mr. Tesalonian back here again. What you see in front of you right here is a proprietary thing that I've been building. Uh, this was done about a year ago, this prototype, but now I'm able to show it to you. Uh, what you see here is a shop vac over here on the side. I've modified a large piece of 4-inch PVC pipe into a vacuum sluice box. So what you see here is an all-dry dredge system. Uh, I've got a bucket of heavy material I just dug out of the wash. I'm going to dump out here in a second. I'm going to fire up the generator, turn on the vacuum. I'm going to let you see this thing in action. And then I'm going to open it up and show you how to build one yourself as cheap as possible out of some PVC, the shop vac you may already have, uh, and the hose that comes with your shop vac. So let me go ahead and take a moment, set this all up, fire up the generator. It's going to be a little noisy in the next shot. But I'm going to dump out that bucket. I'm going to start showing you the vacuum in action, the dredge in action. Then we're going to shut off the vacuum and everything, and I'm going to open it up and show you what it looks like inside with the gravels and the materials caught inside the ripples inside of the desert dredge. Give me one moment. Now I tell you, showing you how it works, how it can vacuum up the material just like a dredge when it's dry. Let me show you how to take it apart, how to pull the sluice box out from a distance here, uh, and then I'll bring you up close and show you what it looks like up close. First thing you're going to want to do is remove your dredge hose. So you just twist the whole system here, pulls the whole end cap out of the 4 inch PVC, that's a threaded PVC 4 inch end cap, hooked right to your basically your dredge hose. First part of the sluice box you pull out is your nugget check. And that's going to be this piece right here. I need a handle on that one. Alright, so that's your nugget check. It's got two purposes. It's got some ripples in it so it can catch any large gold. It's also got a perforated sheet. Maybe you can see that. It's also got on the underside here, I cut out the PVC and allowed for some channels underneath that. That's a fine gold catch and nugget trap underneath there. Now that I've shown you the smaller gold trap inside of there and the nugget check, let me show you the larger sluice box that's inside of this. All you're going to do is reach inside and pull it out. That right there is your whole inner sluice box. Now you'll notice there's some holes at the top of this. Uh, I wanted some ridges and some vacuum areas that are going to create pockets inside of there. 
Uh, this pocket here is designed to create a sideways blast, that's why it's off center, to kind of break up the material before putting it into the vacuum so there's no plug up here at the end. Uh, inside of this is pretty standard uh, riffling for a sluice box. Now the system I'm selling has got actually specially designed vacuum riffles in there. Uh, standard riffles do work though. When I first built this system, that's how I did it, and it trapped gold pretty well. I saw some issues with it, so I went and redesigned the riffles just a little bit for uh, use under vacuum instead of water. Both flow very, very similar and do create eddies behind the riffles, so not a lot of difference. But that's your inner sluice box. Let me go ahead and stick the nugget trap back in there so you can see how and why that works. Okay, so it doesn't go all the way in. It sticks out just a little further than the rest of it. What that allows it to do is, when this is all the way inside the system here, it sticks out right about to the end of the rim. That allows the end cap to go up and over that, so the feed is actually inside and over the channel here, not back against the edge. Allows the material right on top of the sluice, it feeds over it. Now with that inner sluice in there, what I've done here is created, I heard all the dirt we just put in rattle out. Uh, I've created a dead zone underneath here. Creates almost like a two uh, stage sluice inside of this pipe, allowing the fines and uh, the heavy gold and the finer stuff to drop underneath the outer sluice box here and get trapped in between the two of them. Creating a nice double system. And at the end, it doesn't go all the way to the end. It allows that material to rise back out since I have some spacers off the bottom. Rise back out get out of the system so it doesn't plug up. So it basically created a two-stage vacuum sluice inside of this. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the camera now and bring you up closer and show you what this looks like up close. All right, I wanted to start at this side of the thing and we'll work our way the other way. All this is is a two-inch PVC threaded coupler here, threaded directly inside of the shop vac's opening. It fit perfectly in there. It threads nice and tight and creates a good seal. You see we go up in size from the two-inch all the way into the four inch here. And that allows us a pretty good area to put the sluice box in. Now these I just put on there so that you have some kind of legs holding up the sluice. And you can also adjust the height so it's also slightly sloped. You don't want it dead flat. You want it like any other sluice system. You want it sloped. And I'll show you here, it's just a threaded end glued onto the four inch PVC. That gives us our cap so we can put it over the end here. Our sluice box is very simple. This was pretty crude. This was my first prototype from about a year ago. Something I wanted to see if it worked. We took it out and used it quite a few times and we caught a lot of gold with it. So all you can see here, it's just a piece of PVC I had to cut the whole way to make it slightly smaller. They're both four inch pieces of PVC. Down here underneath you'll see there's a piece of carpet, some uh, expanded metal mesh inside of there, allowing for a gold trap at the very end. And these are all your riffles up through this whole system. And once again, you can see that perforated hole. And that allows most of that fine material, any nuggets smaller than these holes, are going to drop through, get caught in these double catches here. These two vacuum areas right underneath it and back out at the end. So it gives you a two-stage sluice system. Pretty easy to build, pretty self-explanatory. See if I can do this one-handed and pull that inner sluice out of there. All right. So you can see it's just another piece of PVC all cut with the screen mounted and some riffles in there. Now like I said, there's some differences that you want to create in your riffles and what you don't see here, which will actually create the uh, airflow to create a really nice vacuum pocket right behind each one of these riffles. This still works very well with the nugget catch underneath. This nugget catch seems to do very well inside this system, which we kept in the production models. Let me go on here to the hose. All right, so you can see here, it's just the threaded end coupling here. You can see I drilled. Let me see if I can pull that off of there for you. All right. You can see what I did here. I just centered my hole saw bit and left some tangs sticking out there. Those tangs actually fit right up inside the vacuum piece and allow you to thread the whole thing as one piece. Work pretty well together. They're all about the right size. So that's all it is. Pretty simple to do. It was uh, something I came up with just to try to dredge in dry environments. And you can see that this thread's on. Let me see if I can one hand to throw the uh, sluice box in there. And there you go, you just slide that all the way in and you've got your inner sluice. You've got 
this one here you slide all the way in and bam right to the lip it's good to go you would thread your couple on right here there you go there's your sealed chamber sluice box right there and nice and easy here you just take the dredge hose and go ahead and throw it on there right through the, let me take that there take the dredge hose slide it right up in it locks into place and there there's the desert dredge so I'm gonna be selling is the sluice box and you're gonna have to come up with uh, your own shop vacs so I will have one model with a shop vac but I just the prices are a little high to try to get a hold of anything worthwhile uh, the only model I'm gonna be selling with the vacuum is gonna be a gas powered vacuum model well until next time I hope you enjoyed this is Mr. Thessalonian Thessalonian Man Show.